Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 22. And in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit more about storm relative helicity and sort of explore what values of storm relative helicity are favorable for certain types of phenomena in the atmosphere. So again, storm relative helicity is a number that uh, can be represented as a number that sort of assesses how much directional shear or vorticity a thunderstorm will have access to. And again, the calculation for that usually involves looking at a photograph and uh, picking out a two levels in the atmosphere that you're interested in and shading an area and then calculating the area that you've shaded. And the explanation for that can be found uh, in the, I believe it's the second segment, where we uh, give sort of a first look at, at photographs. And by convention, if you've got positive values of storm relative helicity, that indicates that you've got cyclonic rotation or a wind profile that will favor cyclonic rotation. And negative values of storm relative helicity will be an indication of uh, anticyclonic rotation, that is thunderstorms that will run a rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere. And storm relative helicity is typically measured at four different layers. Uh, it used to be measured at three different layers, but there was a very recent research publication. Uh, if you're really interested in reading it, it's going to be a, there's going to be a link in the description below. But it was published just last year, and there's a new layer in the atmosphere that's being used to assess tornado potential. And we're actually going to go ahead and discuss that a little bit during the course of uh, during the course of this segment. And the first, in fact, that's the first thing that we're going to look at is the idea of surface to 500 meter helicity. So some of you may have seen uh, calculations for surface to one kilometer, surface to three kilometer helicity, but now there's a new parameterization, uh, surface to 500 meter helicity, which is now being used to primarily assess the potential for tornadoes. Uh, earlier in, a, in the past, we've been using surface to one kilometer helicity, but uh, this research publication, again, there'll be a link to it in the description below, suggests that we should really be using surface to 500 meter helicity to assess tornado potential in the atmosphere. And of course, surface to one kilometer helicity, that's what was being used before. Uh, it can be used to assess tornado potential, but it's not quite as uh, effective as using uh, surface to 500 meter helicity. But you can also use this to assess the potential for supercells. In fact, that's probably a better use for it uh, now, now that we have surface to 500 meter helicity being a better metric used, being used to assess tornado potential. And then surface to three kilometer helicity, which is another very commonly reported value, uh, that's something that you will pri primarily want to use to assess the potential for supercells. Uh, tornadoes don't usually extend three kilometers into the atmosphere, so trying to look at this deep of a layer is not going to be very beneficial if you're trying to forecast tornadoes. And there's another uh, value that's reported called the effective layer storm relative helicity, and this this uh, measures how much uh, storm relative helicity or how much vo streamwise vorticity is present in what's referred to as the effective inflow layer, which is basically just the depth of the atmosphere where a thunderstorm can get its fuel supply. So as an example, suppose you've got an effective inflow layer that's from the surface up to 1,200 meters. That means the thunderstorm is, uh, can re uh, receive its fuel supply, can get its supply of warm, moist air uh, in, the, in the layer between 0 meters and 1,200 meters. So that's what we mean by effective inflow layer. It's basically a depth of the atmosphere where the thunderstorm can receive its fuel supply. So if a thunderstorm can receive its fuel supply from 0 to 1,200 meters, then the effective inflow layer extends from 0 to 1,200 meters. And ideally, you want a very deep effective inflow layer if you want a widespread thunderstorm development. If it's very shallow, then you might not get any thunderstorms forming at all. But this can also be used to assess tornado and supercell potential, but uh, per the recent research publication, service to 500 meter helicity is the much better metric to use to assess the potential for tornadoes. And so now you might be wondering, okay, what values uh, really, uh, what values signal for tornadoes and what values don't, or what values, uh, what values produce specific hazards in the atmosphere? So that's what we're going to be looking at now. If you've got an effective storm relative helicity value of at least 50 meters squared per second squared, then you might have an environment that is favorable for rotating thunderstorms. That is, you might have an environment favorable for supercells. Values over 100 might be a signal that conditions are favorable for tornadoes, but again, service to 500 meter helicity has uh, proved itself to be a better metric to use than effective storm relative helicity. But this is sort of a legacy, uh, sort of a legacy table. This is what was used previously um, but slowly we're transitioning to uh, service to 500 meter helicity using that as a, a metric for, for uh, predicting tornadoes. But in the past, if you've got an effective value over 200 meters squared per second squared, then that might be a signal that you've got an atmosphere where strong tornadoes might be favored. And again, you're probably not gonna get strong tornadoes unless you've got supercell mode. So if, you don't have, if you're not gonna have any supercells, if you're just gonna have a big line of storms with no supercells, then you can forget about strong tornadoes just about.
Not saying you can't get a strong tornado from something like a squalling, but it's much less likely. And if you happen to get a value over 400 in the warm sector, uh, things are going to get interesting, and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, that's a pretty volatile dynamic profile if you see a value over 400 in the warm sector. And we'll also go ahead and cover some of the uh, values highlighted in the uh, research publication. Again, there'll be a link to that in the description below. But it's been found that values above uh, service to 500 storm relative velocity values above 25 meters squared per second squared uh, typically signals in an atmosphere that's favorable for rotating thunderstorms. Again, that is just a uh, fancy way of saying supercells. And values above 50 meters squared per second squared are a signal that you might have conditions favorable for tornadoes. And again, this metric is much better, uh, a much better predictor of tornadoes than the metrics that were used in the past. And a value above 150 meters squared per second squared, uh, that's when you might start worrying about strong tornadoes if you're going to have supercells in an environment like that. And if you happen to see a surface to 500 uh, SRH value of over 300, Things are going to get interesting again, <laughs> and it's pretty unusual to see values this high in the warm sector air mass. Uh, that is, it's pretty unusual to see wind shear this intense where the atmosphere is also warm and moist and unstable. But if you do see values like that, uh, get ready for a rough ride potentially, <laughs> uh, and we'll just leave it at that. But that's going to do it on this. Uh, that's going to do it on this segment for uh, storm relative velocity, and in the next segment, we are going to take a look at the idea of a composite parameter, which combines uh, wind shear values and stability values to assess uh, the threats for various phenomena in the atmosphere. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.